whether your progress is slow in DaVinci Resolve Fusion or you want to do like a sponsored segment or something, you're going to love this video. Welcome back to Creator Reality, my friend. Today we're going to create our own progress bar in the DaVinci Resolve Fusion page. Yes, you could do this in the edit page and you could redo it each time, etc., etc. But this way, we're going to make it reusable. We're going to make our own fusion generator out of it. So I hope you enjoy. Let's dive into DaVinci Resolve and make stuff. Here I have a blank timeline and we're going to go to effects. If you don't see it, click on effects and we're going to come down to effects and we're going to drag fusion composition in and we're going to make it two seconds long. That's just a default. When you stretch it later, it'll work fine. Just trust me on this. And then we're going to click it and we're going to click the fusion icon. When we're in fusion here, all we see is media out one. So we need some more nodes. We need a background node and we need a text node. So we'll grab a text node and we're going to need some other stuff. We'll add it as we need it. But the first thing we need to do is drag from the output of background one into the input of media out one and media out one. You see, it's got the white dot there. It's going to show up over here. Background one, if we press the one key, it shows up in the left. So now that we put it in here, everything's black. That's fine. What we need to do is go to alpha and drop it down so that everything that we're not going to create on top of it is transparent. And then we're going to go from type solid color down to gradient. And this gives you black and white. We can click on each of these triangles and then you can either click the color picker or you can click on the color itself and we'll select blue to start, so a bright blue, and then we'll click on the right arrow here and we'll do a bright green. And if you want to click on somewhere in the middle, you can add a third color. This is just your preference. Whatever you select here will be shown in your progress bar. So I'm going to click cancel and control Z to go back one stop, but it went back two. So I'll select my green again. And now we have blue to green. That's cool. So now we need a way to mask this off, right? So we're going to use a curve polygon and you can drag one in or check this out. If I control Z to undo, if I just have background one selected and I click on the curve polygon, it creates the node and connects it, but nothing's shown up, right? Because this is connected via the blue input, which is the mask input to the background one node. Now here's for the magic. We want to create our progress bar. We're going to click somewhere over here and then we're going to hold shift and come to the right about the same distance off the edge of the frame. And we're going to click again. Holding shift keeps a horizontal line for us. Now we have a horizontal line, but nothing's visible. It's fine because we have to bring our border width up. So we're going to bring it up to about 0.02. Yeah, that's good. 0.02. You can adjust this to your liking, whatever. And then we want to select background one again, press shift space bar, type in drop and select drop shadow, click add. And this will create a drop shadow underneath of our background one. Background one is in the left viewer, but if I click on drop shadow one and press one, now you'll see it's in the left viewer as well. So we still have media out one in the right viewer and drop shadow one in the left viewer. Now we need to add our text in. So we can come in here, we can type in sample text and that's fine, but then we need to merge it in. So we drag from the output of text one into the output of drop shadow one and merge one is created. We'll drag that over to be clean. And this is fine, but we really want to go with something different. So I'm going to choose HY headline medium, and then I'm going to come over to shading and I'm going to click on the three button and enable the black shadow. So we have a simple black shadow. Now I can grab these uh, arrows here and I can drag it down over into the corner there, but it's too big. So we'll go back to text and we'll bring our size down a little bit and then we'll drag it again over here. But I said, we're gonna make this reusable. We're gonna be able to change the text, which I think is pretty cool. So we need to change some of the properties of our text one node. Now to do that, we want to come over here to H anchor and drag it all the way to the left. Notice the text move to the right. What this does is it means that any text that we type in comes at the end, right? If I control Z to undo that and control Z all the way here to where H anchor is centered. If I type in more text, it moves it to the left off the frame because it's centered on this spot. When I go to H anchor and I drag it to the left, it's moved over quite a bit. So we can go in and get rid of the extra text 
and again drag it over into the corner. And there, it's set up, right? Not so fast. We got to add some fusion expressions, which means we're going to want to group this. But before we do, let's give ourselves a couple of options. So we'll drag polygon one over, lasso select background one and drop shadow one, control C to copy, and then click an empty space, control V to paste. Now with polygon one selected, we wanna create an instance so that it reuses the fusion expression we're gonna give it later. So with polygon one selected, press control C, click in empty space, press control shift V to paste an instance. See the green line, there we go. Now we'll drag it over from the output of that to the blue input of background one one, and now we've created an instance and copies. Let's click on background one one, press the one key, it shows up in our left viewer. We wanna change the blue to red, so we'll click okay. But I don't like this muted garbage in the middle, so I'm gonna click right in the middle here, and I'm gonna click on my color and drag up this brightness to yellow. So now it's red, yellow, green. So that's cool, that's what we wanted. Let's lasso select these controls and move them over to make room because click an empty space, shift space bar, we need a switch node, ta-da. So now we have a switch node, which has two inputs, that's good. Let's click on config, two inputs is good. And we're gonna do uh, blue to green. And in name one, we'll select that and do red to green. And you can make all sorts of setups that you want. You can expand upon this at will. Now we have switch set up. Let's disconnect our line here. We just click on the right half of that and we're gonna drag our first one into uh, blue to green. So there it is, blue to green. And then this one's gonna go red to green so that they're lined up. We'll move that up and we'll drag it in here. And now voila, we've got all of our controls set up. So now we're gonna select all of these controls, all these nodes rather, and we're gonna right click and select group. And then with group one selected, we'll press F2 and we can call it progress bar. Ta-da, and it removed the space for us. Thanks, Resolve. Double click it to expand it and we've got everything at the ready, except we need to add our fusion expressions. So we're gonna start with the text one. We're gonna right click in the text box, click expression, select all this, backspace to get rid of it. And then in the video description below, you will find the fusion expression so you can copy and paste it. We're gonna break it down in just a minute, but let's paste it and see the effect. So I've got it copied from Notepad and voila, there it is, press enter. Things go red, don't worry about it, not a problem. That one's been set up. Let's go to polygon one and you see we have our position and length. Well, we need length. If I drag this, see how that goes left to right, right to left? We're gonna right click on length, click expression. And again, there will be another fusion expression in the video description below for this one. They're clearly marked, I trust me on this. Are you having fun? Are you learning anything? Boop the like button. This one is super simple. We're going to select what's in there and paste it in. Now let's break down this one since it is really quick. Time is just the current frame in the clip and comp.renderend is the number of frames in the clip. So as the uh, clip plays, the progress indicator will get longer and longer and it'll finish at 1.0. But it has to go from zero to one and this does that for us. And now if I drag through my timeline here, you can see that the red to green bar is moving left to right. And notice that it, this still says blue to green, that's because our config said blue to green. And we've got some red stuff, it's fine. We're gonna click on progress bar and we're going to right click, come to edit controls and it'll open up this window. We just wanna type in progress space message, press tab and it creates the ID progress message. It's text, default text. We can just type in sample text and it's a text edit control and we're gonna enter one in the lines. That's all we need to do. Click OK, it shows up in the user tab. There you go. Whoa, everything went white and look at that. So there's no text in the progress message. I don't know why the default thing isn't working, but let's type something in. We'll type in subscribe now and notice that our progress indicator has the text in there. So let's break down this fusion expression that is above me now. There's some semi-complicated things going on, but let's break it down into simple terms. 
The first thing is progress message dot value. What that does is it gets the value of progress message. If you try to just use progress message, it doesn't work. Got to have the dot value. Took me a while to figure that one out. Hope you appreciate that. We're doing a string format. That's the string dot format. And the 02D, that's two digits. That's what we want. And it's going to go through and use each of the values that we give it in that string. And then, you know, you've got the colon in there. So it's going to be 00, dot, uh, colon, zero, zero. That's, you know, that's the thing. Zero, zero, colon, zero, zero. We could have up to 59, 59, right? That's kind of how, you know, math works. But anyway, <laughs> we're, we are using the math dot floor to get to the bottom level of things instead of going to the ceiling, which would round up. So we're rounding down. And then we're doing the comp dot render end, which is the number of frames in our clip and time, which is the current frame of the clip. In addition, we're also getting the frame rate with the comp get prefs comp dot frame format dot rate. Blah, blah, blah. It's a mouthful, but that is just the frame rate for the clip so that if you have 15 frames a second, 24, 25, 30, 60, 120, this progress bar will look right no matter which frame rate you have for your timeline. Pretty cool stuff, right? And then later on, the percent symbol is a modulo operator. So it's the leftover. So 150 modulo 120 is 30. I think that math works out. So feel free to muck about, change things, modify things, play with things, build upon this if you want. At the end of the day, you can just go back to what we have here and it'll still work, right? Pretty cool. But now we want to change from blue to green to red to uh, green, right? So with progress bar selected, we're going to come up here, right click, edit controls, and we're going to type in bar color. There we go. Press tab, creates bar color. It's a number. That's what we want. And the user tab is fine. Default is going to be zero. It is an integer. The range is zero to one. Okay, allowed, zero to one. And then we wanna give it a combo control. So there it is right there, items. We wanna type the first one is blue to green, click add. And then we wanna do red to green, click add and click okay. Now we can go to switch and we have our number of inputs and we have our controls. We're gonna right click on source choose expression and we're going to select what's in there and type in bar color and then click away and now voila we should be able to change this to red to green and look it changed there and it changed back and we're going to type in here sample text again because we're about to change this and end the video no not, not yet okay it'll go on a couple more minutes let's do the saving so we can do the reusing so what we need to do is right click on our progress bar, come to settings, save as, and it's already in our generators because I was playing around earlier. Where it's gonna start you is right here in Fusion with all of these folders. So you wanna be in DaVinci Resolve, Support, Fusion, Templates, Edit, Generators, and we're gonna call this progress bar underscore demo. You can call it whatever you want. We're gonna click save. Anyway, Let's go back into the edit page and take a look at what the finished product looks like. So we have our original fusion composition. What I'm gonna do is go to effects, generators, click on the magnifying glass, type in demo, progress bar demo, there it is. Sample text 002, we can stretch this out. If I alt mouse wheel and make it like two minutes long, how long is that? Two minutes and 10 seconds. We have 210 and it goes all the way down and look at that, boom, perfect. Gives us the perfect progress indicator with our sample text in there. We can come over here in our inspector, if you don't see it, click inspector and then progress bar demo. We have our sample text, which we can change to uh, sponsored segment, if I could type tonight. And then we want it to go red to green, boom. There you go, look at that. How cool is that? Yeah, look at that, that is so neat. Oh, I love it. So that was pretty cool, right? We created a progress bar with custom text. You can switch the progress bar colors. You can build upon this. You can create your own versions of them and just save them with new names in your generators folder. And boom, you're off to the races for whatever kind of project you need to work on, right? 
Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, boop the like button. Please consider subscribing. Ask your questions in the comment section below. And until next time, go check out this video, and I'll see you there. John out.